Live now is Peter Matthews, Professor of Political Science at Cyprus College. Good afternoon to you, Professor. Hello, Janie. How are you? Very well indeed. Thank you. Well, let's start with the, the recent news on an Israeli airstrike which destroyed a high-rise building in Gaza City. Housing International Media Companies, as we've just mentioned, Joe Biden has spoken to Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Palestinian President urging for calm. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Well, we certainly need calm, but so many, many people have been injured and killed. Uh, over a thousand have been injured in Gaza, and 145 people killed, and those 40 of those were children. And of course, uh, seven Israelis were killed, one soldier in this conflict. And it's got to—it's really got to end, and it needs to be solved in a comprehensive way, which would include going back to, I think, the pre-67 borders and UN Resolution 242 being implemented, the two-state solution as President Biden supports. And uh, the U.S. government has pledged to investigate reports that migrant children were forced to remain on buses as they wait to be relocated away from the border. Uh, just an ongoing devastating situation. In March, we saw a record-breaking uh, almost 19,000 unaccompanied migrant minors entering the U.S. through the southern border. It's a big tragedy, Janie, and it's because uh, a lot of economic conditions and uh, criminal justice. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of a crime wave in those countries and a lack of uh, funding and a rich poor gap. And these kids are being sent north by their parents to survive. Uh, drug lords are involved, and we need to get economic development further into those Central American, Northern Triangle countries. And that has to come through fair trade and American investment that would help uh, with fair wages. That's the other thing. Those countries are in poverty condition. These kids are coming here to survive, and it, it, Joe Biden is doing the best he can. But it's very, still very tragic that they're being separated from their parents or kept away from their parents for a while and then reunited uh, with relatives here, hopefully. But it's a big uh, macroeconomic situation. as was a personal one as well that I think President Biden is trying to handle uh, as hard as he can, as well as he can. Yeah, very tragic indeed. Professor, can you bring us up to speed on the latest news regarding COVID-19 in America? We've heard masks are no longer mandatory in some areas and also for fully vaccinated People, it's certainly been what, over a year now since people began working from home and homeschooling, etc. Yes, and we've been living through it also with my little nine-year-old in third grade doing, you know, remote, remote schooling. But the thing with this new uh, CDC ruling or guidance, to guidance actually for the states and localities to follow if they want to, and that is saying that those who are fully vaccinated need not wear masks indoors or outdoors in most settings. And this is very confusing for a lot of people. A lot of retail stores, for example, where customers come in, some will have masks on, some won't have them on. And there's still no mask police to enforce whether or not the unvaccinated are not are actually wearing masks and those who are vaccinated are, are not wearing them. It could be someone's not vaccinated not wearing them as well. And it's causing consternation among the unions and the labor leaders are saying their workers are at risk, these retail stores, for example. The CDC should be much more clear in their guidelines and make them more uniform and try to get the state governors to comply with them across the board. It's so much of a hodgepodge approach again without clear guidance, and it's a real problem has to be fixed. Yeah, you make some good points there. I mean, there's no policing. Are there any fines at all? Because it's going to be really hard to, to figure out who has been vaccinated and who hasn't. It, there are signs in some states. There's actually con conflict been occurring. And the problem is some states, like, well, good, the good thing is New York and California and New Jersey are going more slow. In, in undoing the mask mandate. They're keeping it for longer because they're not sure yet if the COVID pandemic is fully over. Other states, about 15 or 17 states, so actually mostly Republican states, have just abandoned the mask mandate to get all together in some cases, and many of them are gonna do it in the next couple of weeks. And that's a real problem having, again, different states acting differently, different portions of states, localities acting differently. I just hope we don't have a resurgence. It's very good, the numbers are good now. We're under 35,000, that's still 35,000 new infections every day. That's still not good enough, but it's, it's better than what it used to be, and several thousand still dying. We got to stop this in its tracks once again. Get the people vaccinated, Jane. That's the key. Getting people vaccinated. We only have half our people with fully fully vaccinated, and about one third, uh, partially. I'm sorry, one third fully vaccinated, one half or so fully vaccinated or partly vaccinated. So that still hasn't been done to a 90 percent or 80 percent level, which we need for herd immunity. And finally, Professor New York Congresswoman uh, Elise Stefanik, known as a Trump loyalist, has been appointed to replace House Leader Liz Cheney. Why was Stefanik chosen? She was chosen out of her blind loyalty to President Trump. 
she even switched her positions on many things. She's not she even a vote with Trump in, in when she was a congresswoman like, in office. She was voting more moderate to liberal, whereas the woman who was replaced, uh, Congresswoman Liz Cheney, who was the third leader of the Republican Party in Congress, was was a real stalwart for rule of law. She believes in rule of law. She said that the party should not be kowtowing to a cult of personality, and for that she was replaced by this other woman who went right along with President Trump recently just to get her position. And it's very tragic for American democracy. I think the rule of law is very important. It doesn't matter whether you're conservative or liberal or, or more conservative or more moderate. You need to be able to accept the rule of law when an election is held, when the winner is declared officially through all kinds of procedures, even the appeals were turned out in court as they were under President Trump. Then the other party and the leaders of that party should accept it. And some did and some didn't. And 70% of Republicans today don't even accept this of the voters. 70% of the Republican voters don't accept President Joe Biden's election. That's a tragedy for democracy and for rule of law. And Liz Cheney is remaining defiant, isn't she? She's making plans to, to seek re-election to Congress. Yes, she is. And we have to really admire her for that. And I think most people of goodwill who believe in democracy should support her in her efforts to, to keep this uh, the legitimacy of the system going. Professor Peter Matthews, always great to chat to you. Have a wonderful weekend and uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you, Jenny. You too. Thousands of people have been queuing for COVID checks in several English towns and cities as surge testing becomes the new front line in the battle against the Indian variant of COVID-19. Concern is so high that the NHS in Bolton has urged anyone over the age